right? Um, I'm going to be building this circuit today. Um, this came from W2AEW, and it's a pulse generator. Uh, it outputs a, uh, a pulse regularly using an oscillator. It uses a, uh, a 74AC14 Schmidt trigger uh, inverter. And um, the Schmidt trigger inverter is nice because it has two distinct places where it'll, it'll change from a low to high state or a high to low state. Um, a lot like a 555 timer has the, the one-third, two-thirds uh, voltage swings. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the 7414 part is, the Schmidt trigger part is a lot like that, so it's easy to make an oscillator out of it. And then uh, it just has a bunch of the, all, all the rest of the uh, inverters are used to drive uh, 220 ohm resistors that kind of sum up to be uh, 50 ohms on the output. Um, and uh, the whole claim to fame of the circuit is to give you very fast rise times in the neighborhood of 10 nanoseconds, I believe. Um, I don't know if I can be able, well, I'll be able to measure that or not, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've always wanted to build one of these, and so uh, I thought I'd go ahead and try. Uh, so here are my parts, uh, my AC14. Uh, I'm going to put it on a socket. Uh, I'm going to put a little... Um, uh, SMA connector as the output. I'll probably just have a place to connect 5 volts to it. Um, no connector or anything like that. Um, and then uh, some 220 ohm resistors, um, a uh, filter capacitor for the 5 volts, and oh, I'm missing the, uh, the timing. I'm going to put a 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor and a 10k uh, resistor. Uh, as my oscillator, so uh, I have to go dig those up. But I uh, have a little piece of uh, PC board here that I'll cut off a little section of, um, and uh, yeah, we'll put it together. All right, there we go. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not real pretty, but it's not too bad. Uh, so I have the little uh, output here. Uh, I have a couple little uh, wire loops here to connect uh, five volts up to. Um, and the uh, all of the load resistors feed into the uh, feed into the output, and my little oscillator circuits over here, 10k ohms and 0.1 microfarad. So uh, let's see, uh, this is five. Yeah, this is five volts. All right, so I will. I will connect this up. Uh, let me get my scope connected first. Uh, let's see, channel one. Channel one is, that's channel two. Channel two is blue, channel one is yellow. All right, here's uh, channel one. And I will connect that. Connect that up to the ground here. I look up at the five volts and I will probe the output and there we go. It's oscillating. Awesome. Okay, so let me uh, let me rearrange things a bit and we'll try to measure the rise time of this thing. All right, I think that's a little bit better. And let me see if I can get the probe back on here. There we go. Zoom way in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Oh, there we go. So we are on 20 nanoseconds per division. And if we click on rise time, uh, it says 15. So that's, I think, the 10% to 90%, 15 nanosecond. So, uh, yeah, it's doing uh, just about what I expected it to do. And it's oscillating at frequency. Frequency is uh, 100 hertz. It says 99 hertz. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll work out great. All right, it's freezing out in the garage, so the uh, heater's on. I hope that's not too noisy. Um, so, I thought I'd uh, try this thing out the way it was intended. Uh, it obviously needs a, a coax cable on it. 
and it needs to be terminated into 50 ohms to get a to get a, a perfect match to get a clean uh, uh, rising edge. Um, I was testing it before with just an oscilloscope probe, and that's going to have uh, impedance and capacitance, and it's not going to give us the fastest edge. This will give us the fastest edge possible um, if the impedances are matched and everything. Um, so let's uh, let's hook, hook this up to the oscilloscope and. Uh, See what kind of uh, what's the fastest waveform we can get out of it. All right, so we have uh, we have our waveform here. Uh, we're at one per division, uh, so we're getting uh, one two and a half volts across to the other side, uh, which is uh, 50 ohms impedance on one side, 50 ohm impedance on the other side. You get you get half the voltage, uh, so that makes sense. So let's. Um, Zoom and take a look at our rising edge. It looks very fast, but there's a wiggle on it. Uh, so that's the first thing I noticed. Is a pretty, pretty substantial wiggle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try various decoupling capacitors. I already have a 0.02 decoupling capacitor, but uh, maybe that's not enough. So I have a uh, uh, a little ceramic 0.01, which is smaller, but I'm going to stick it on the VCC line and we'll see what happens there. There you can see it change. It goes from a, a fast wiggle to a slower wiggle. So we're adding about 50% more capacitance on the line and that's uh, slowing down that pulse, or the, I mean the ring. Uh, see so that was 0.01. Let's try a 0.1. This is a 0.1 and oh there we go. It's going out pretty nicely. Let's go a little slower. And you can see there's still some oh shoot. Hard to hold it on there. There's still a little bit of waviness. And then if I put a, a one microfarad tanzalum, which has a pretty stout ESR uh, it has a, a low resistance. Um, it's very, very, very quiet. So that uh, we'll put a, a, a one microfarad tantalum on there, and boy, that cleans it up. So uh, I will add that to the circuit next, and then we will take a look at the rest of the rest of it. Is this little thing here? I'll just give you a preview. I'll hold it on. I'll hold it on again. And uh, that little bit doesn't change at all. Uh, there's a, a there's two sections of inductance. One one that's this low ring, probably the VCC leads, and then uh, probably the trace uh, inductances of the output section or something, giving us this giving us that fast ring. Um, so anyway, let me uh, solder this uh, capacitor on, and we'll at least fix the big ring, and then we'll go look at the uh, go look at the little ring. All right, I have the one microfarad in there now, and we're nice and smooth. We zoom way in, we can get to uh, get to our rising edge here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let's see. I'll put ground down here, and yeah, there we go. And we are all the way as fast as the scope will go, and we will measure the rise time. And we are getting it is varying, so I will stop. It. That is four nanoseconds. So there is a four nanosecond uh, rise time uh, from the ten percent to the ninety percent. Um, that's certainly within expectations. Um, Let's see here if we do reference, reference one, save, uh, there we go. So if we remove the signal, we still have reference one showing. Oh, I don't have it running. Let's see here, run. Ah. There we go. So we are running and uh, that'll stay up there. All right. So. What I'm going to do, 
something I noticed was very strange, something I wanted to do, was to replace the uh, 74AC part with the 74HC part. The HC part should be a lot slower. So let's see how fast, uh, how fast that operates. I won't change anything except I'm going to swap out the chip. And what we see is something I claim is better. <laughs> Strangely enough, the, uh, that quick ringing is gone. And um, if we take a look at the, uh, the yellow waveform is what the uh, 74HC part is. It's actually an HCT part, but it should be the same as an HC part. Um, it's giving us a, a very well damped um, signal. And uh, the rise time is actually measuring 3.3 uh, nanoseconds, so it's actually even faster, um, possibly due to that ring. So, um, why is that? <laughs> um, the, HC, the AC part should be faster by about, oh, like at least three times faster, I think, something like that. Um, so let's take a look at some data sheets. So the first thing I looked at was this uh, article by uh, Texas Instruments on designing with logic. It's a very nice primer for uh, doing logic design. talks a lot about uh, input protection diodes and output protection diodes and how you have to handle those with your circuit. What happens if you turn power off? There's current paths and stuff that you may want to take care of. Um, talks about some characteristics of how things are put together. Um, and then it talks about some waveforms that we're interested in, a rising edge and a falling edge. And um, we can take a look here. Here's a chart. Uh, talks about uh, an HC part having a, uh, it gives it in values of DD, D, DTDV, so nanoseconds per volt. And the HC part says 110 nanoseconds per volt. And it says the, um, AC part is only 10 nanoseconds per volt. So it would say, ah, the AC part is 10 times faster than the HC part. Well, <clears throat> this is required minimum input rise times, not uh, output. So these are for input values, so we can't use those. So then I said, okay, well, let me, let me keep looking. Um, let me keep looking. Ah, here we go. Uh, here's a table that's interesting. This is uh, internal resistance, if you take a look at the HC part, it is about 40 to 120 ohms output. So some people say you don't need those resistors to launch into 50 ohms, but I believe you do. This is short, this is short circuit condition, so you don't want to be driving your um, <laughs> part in short circuit condition. So I, I believe that having those resistors in there is still an okay thing to do. And again, the AC part's about 10 times uh, lower impedance output than the HC part. So once again, it should be able to drive fast edges. But again, no mention of what those edges would be. And then if we look in the rest of the document, we find nothing. Nothing on, nothing on rise times. Very interesting. And so I said, okay, well, let's look at some data sheets. Uh, here's a data sheet. Um, not all the data sheets had rise times in them. Uh, you can call it slew rate. You can call it transition time, you can call it rise time, call it different things, but I couldn't find them in several uh, data sheets for these parts. Um, this one did. This one did have a value, and it had some uh, diagrams here. So it had a 10% and 90%, uh, uh, and then it also had, uh, so this is, um, like a propagation delay. If something happens on the input, then it gets delayed, and then something happens on the output. So this is kind of a propagation delay chart. And here is a plus and minus drive condition. So it has these, uh, and these are output conditions. So these are, these are, uh, uh, let's see if I can zoom a little bit more on that one. So uh, these are uh, 10 to 90 percent rise times output conditions. We're interested in the value TR. 
And since CMOS is uh, symmetric, the rise and fall times are always the same. Um, and then this is how it's measured. Um, and what value do we get? Uh, we get six nanoseconds. So it says that the 74HC14 and the 74HCT14 would give a, uh, a six nanosecond output into 15 picofarads um, and 15, 50 picofarads. Either one gives you the same value. Um, so six nanoseconds. All right. So we were seeing better than that, but these are typicals. So, okay. It's about twice as good as this value. It's about three, three nanoseconds. Let's look at the other data sheet. So this is a 74 AC part, which should be 10 times faster. Uh, so let's look for switching times. And here I found them. And guess what? Six nanoseconds, exactly the same. Um, even though the propagation delays are much faster, um, the switching characteristics are the same. Um, and that's sort of what we're seeing in the uh, seeing on the oscilloscope. Um, we are not seeing a big difference. Uh, zoom out a bit. Oops. Oh, I can't change the reference at the same time. So I'll just have to leave it the way it is. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, it seems as though if you're going to build the circuit, um, don't waste your money on an AC part. Uh, the, a a the HC part seems to be just fine. And maybe better. It doesn't ring as much. Um, and that's probably because of the increased output impedance of the drive. Um, it's, not, it's not putting out as much current drive. Um, so... Uh, it has a little more resistance uh, to, to smooth things out um, without damaging the uh, rice time characteristics. So, yeah, very interesting.